Good morning and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. We've got Holly Ibarra in the house. Hey, hey, hey. And of course, we've got Jens Johnson. And so we just want to welcome everyone who's coming in for Tuesday Turn Up. And you know the drill, guys. If you're coming in live, type a one. If, and if you're coming in on the replay, hashtag replay so that we can connect with you. We've already got Mark Latham coming in saying good morning. And we're going to rock this show today. And we're going to continue this conversation about family and what it means. And uh, matter of fact, Jens is going to interview Holly. And I'm just going to kind of be back here being like this. So uh, okay. here we go, guys. I'm going to start praying um, and we're going to rock this thing today. All right. So, Father, we just thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. We thank you for marriages. We thank you for families. We thank you for, um, you know, even through everything that's going on right now, there's like two sides going on. There's there's stuff, all this stuff. Father, we know that as we focus on you, everything else dissipates and everything else doesn't even matter. And so, Father, right now, as we stand on our foundation, which is Jesus Christ, we know that you have a plan and a purpose. And no matter what we think, no matter what chatter comes into our mind, no matter what is going on around us, no matter what whirlwind we're in, we know that we can rely on you and we can stand on your word. And so, Father, your word is living and true and it's it's an active thing that's in our life. And so, Father, we just pray that today that your active word would permeate through all of the airwaves, through all of the video, through everything that we we see. And Father, we just ask that you would bless us and keep us today. Bless our families, no matter where they may be, if they're long distance or if they're at home. We ask that um, every curse is broken and we ask that your blessing is released into the atmosphere. And we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So I am so excited to have Ollie, Holly on the show today. And I'm so excited to have all of our, our, res, our, our I'm going to say our resident community of believers, <laughs> um, you know, watching live and watching on the, on the replay, because I was telling Pastor Paul, you know, before we started that you know, I, I just see a, a total, a total revival that's happening in, in, in the, our, our country. And it makes me so happy and excited because, you know, we are where we are in our country with all the chaos, with Satan's stronghold on so many people because we have not been doing life God's way. We have taken them out of our, our church literally in many ways We've taken them out of our schools. We've taken them out of our communities. We've taken them out of our jobs. We've taken them out of our relationships. We've taken them out of our homes. Mm -hmm. And not only have we taken God out of our homes, we've allowed Satan in our homes. And that's what happens. Right. That's what happens, folks. You know, when you take God out, you just open in the door for Satan to come in. And so the scripture that is our um, our episode scripture for today is out of Psalms, and it's 1830. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this is truth, and, and we need it. And we need to understand that our God, that God is perfect perfect. And that if we do decide to live our lives with him, doing his will, his way, our faith, right. that he is our protection right. and we will find refuge in him and our families will find refuge in him. So, you know, as we go along, I just, when Pastor Paul said, Hey, I think Holly's going to come on tomorrow, which is, is beautiful. Amazing. I'm going to say beautiful inside and out because, you know, obviously you see her beauty here, her external beauty, but not till you start hearing her speak and you're around her. Does you just her internal beauty just come out? And, um, and I said, I'd love to interview Holly because, you know, Holly, you know, I want to hear from your perspective sure. as a mom, you know, here you are a mom. You, um, um, you were married, you had a, a you know, a child, mm -hmm. you decided to, to leave that first 
has been, you're a single mom, mm -hmm. you get remarried. There's a journey oh, that yeah. a, a mother goes through, especially if you do divorce from the biological father and you're a single mom. And then there's a journey. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what's that journey been as a mom being that being, you know, being the mama bear, protecting that child, the decisions you've made and your, your faith and your walk with the Lord and how that has got you to where you are now, where you and, and, um, you know, your amazing husband, you're actually, you're moving this weekend yeah, so we you can be closer. So right. kind of share that, that walk with knowing what your responsibility as a mom in, in, in God's way mm -hmm. and where you are now, because I think it's really important that people hear, hear this journey. Um, sure. Thanks, Jen. Good morning, everybody. I think um, I try and try and make it condensed in the beginning so we could spend a little more time at the end. But um, in the beginning, first of all, I had my son when I was older, I was uh, 32 when I had him. So I never thought that I could have kids. So when God blessed me with him, um, I definitely mama bear kicked in and um, it was 99.9% .9 just the two of us until he was 12 years old and I married Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so we were super, super close. We are super, super close, but especially when he was growing up I mean, he was my shadow, we were together all the time, um, but I did work full time um, and he was in daycare and he was in after school care. And I think that, um, that paid, he paid the price for that. He knew, um, he knew I loved him. He knew that I worked really hard to take care of our family, but there was times that, you know, I missed stuff that because of work, you know, and it happens. Um, and that, that was really fine until he, until he got older and, to, and honestly, until Paul came in the mix and there was somebody else when it was more than just the two of us, my attention was, you know, towards my husband now. And so he had a little bit of a rough adjustment at 12 years old when, you know, it's hard being 12 anyway, you know, all those changes and teenagers and preteens and all that stuff. So his teenage years were, were a bit hard. Um, and of course, there's things I would have done over again, you know, had, had I had the chance. But, you know, we got through it and, and he's wonderful and fine. He's 21, almost 22 now. And coming up to COVID, you know, he left um, right after he graduated from high school, he was having some challenges and he wanted to go live with his biological dad, which is wonderful and fine. You know, we have a very good co-parenting, <laughs> the three of us have a very good co-parenting sort of relationship. Um, and he never had lived with his dad full time. He had just spent summers there. So boys need their fathers. Uh, it's just a fact of life. They need their fathers um, whenever possible. So he went to go live with his dad after high school. And so that really kind of, we weren't planning on it. It was um, kind of an unplanned sort of separation. So that took me by a huge surprise. I knew it was the right thing that he needed to go, but it set mama bear into a little bit, I would say a little bit of a depression. When you say I sat in my rocking chair, I still went to work and all that stuff, but I sat in the lazy boy there for about three months until my husband kicked my butt and said, get out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, the love from my child, I mean, anybody, everybody loves their kids. That's kind of the common ground when in the, our world of diversity, you always start with our common ground and our common ground is how much we love our children. Um, and then we kind of work from there, or build from there, especially in denominational and all this sort of thing. Every, we love Jesus and that's the foundation. We love Jesus and we kind of build on the relationship from there. So um, when he left, uh, I definitely was not myself for a while. And it took a while to relearn my husband and to to learn my husband as just the two of us and then to learn my son now as more of a grown up instead of a little boy. And that's still a transition as we have been traveling out to Colorado to find the house and to to visit with and see family. It's like he's not at mom's beck and call anymore. He has his own life. He has a job. He has a girlfriend. He has things going on and he can't just drop everything because mom's here. <laughs> so that's kind of, that was a reality check for me, especially last time I was like, oh yeah, he is busy. He, you know, it wasn't like an ouchy thing. It was just like a, oh yeah, he's a grown up. He's got things he has to do. 
So when all of this COVID business hit, um, especially in the beginning, I would say I got furloughed in May. So I was home, not doing anything, um, which was an odd experience as well. Um, he came home for my birthday. So through May through July, we were really hunkered down. We weren't doing anything. We were finishing really siloed. We were finishing the house. Um, and I really was missing my kid. I was worried about him because there all the, the media and the, the everything that was going on, you know, in, in our world. And I was worried about him. I'm like, he is too far away. He's just, he's just too far away. I can't reach out and touch him. He was, you know, he's 12 hours away from us, 13 hours away from us. Um, so he, we made it so he could come home for a long weekend, just over my birthday in July. And when he came home, it was like, okay, everything's right again. You know, he was here. Everything was just right and peaceful. And it was like the, the puzzle piece was put back in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just the missing piece of our lives and it was put back together. And he left and Paul took him to the airport. And when he took him to the airport, I just was praying. I'm like, Lord, I, I don't, I can't do this. You know, I need to be closer to him. What if something really bad did happen? You know, what if this stupid COVID thing gets worse? What, you know, what if all the what crazy what ifs that go through our minds? And so I, I felt it drop in my spirit that it was time to go. And Lord just said it was time to go. And we've always talked about moving out to Colorado, you know, after after retirement or after, you know, some 10 years from now, whatever. Um, we always talked about it. And I was on furlough. And Paul works from home, as you guys know. So my job wasn't holding me here. Um, we don't have any family here. There was nothing holding us here. And the Lord really impressed in my spirit, it's time to go. So I was um, more upset than normal when he left this time. You know, usually it's always that kind of, you know, I cry a bit. But mm -hmm. more upset, deeper, I think deeper in my belly, upset than normal when he left. And so when Paul got home to the airport, from the airport, I said, I think you need to sit down and we need to have a talk because I have something scary I want to talk to you about. And we just, I just told him, I said, it's time to go. We've got, I've got to be closer to him. I, I just have to, there, there's a, a, a pull in me that I need to be closer to him. And he said, okay. And I was like, Okay. I thought it was going to be this big, long conversation and we were going to have to I said, make it happen. fight it out, you know, and, and compromise and all those things that we do in marriage. And he was like, okay, so, go ahead. Yeah. You know, what I was going to say is what I love about this, this story is you, you're going by inspiration. Mm -hmm. You're allowing the Lord to lead you yeah. by inspiration and in, in you know, I firmly believe everything that that God wants and he leads us, it's for our growth and for our protection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what one of the things that I've seen through this COVID situation, I've seen things that I've never seen happen before. You know, I'm in I'm, I'm in my early 50s here. So, you know, I've been around, uh, but I still think I'm very young because <laughs> I am. But, you know, I've, I'm seeing things happen that I've never, ever seen happen before, mm -hmm. ever. And God is placing on people's hearts, his disciples. He's impressing what um, what he wants and needs us to do. And it's either we're struggling, saying we still want to do it our way. We want to do it our way. We want to do it our way. Mm -hmm. Or I see such a, a, I really want to say mass of people that I know and I don't know that are following God's impressions mm -hmm. that he's placing on their heart. You know, you said, um, I just felt so strongly deeper because I don't know what's going to happen. Right. You know, listen, at the very beginning of this COVID mess in March, um, there was a lot of things that I did not know that was going on in this world that now because of COVID, it's been uncovered. 
-hmm. You know, God is uncovering a lot of things that had been going on in darkness that we didn't know about. And he's bringing it to light. And, you know, one of the things I was I was sharing earlier is I've got a friend of mine, um, Brian Glenn, and I've got to get him on the show. But um, he's an anchor for Right Side Broadcasting. And I actually met him here in Dallas when he was an anchor for WFAA um, Channel 8 News. And I met him and we just immediately connected because he's a fellow believer. And, you know, we talked about this is, you know, there are believers that are only hearers of the word. They know they believe the word is true. They hear it. And they say, amen. Yeah. Well, that's all they say is amen. <laughs> and then there are doers right. of the word. And the doers of the word are the ones that hear the word. They, they seek and, they, and they, they understand what it is that they're supposed to do. They do, those, they do it. And then that's when God can impress upon you on your soul because he knows you're going to continue to act and do that right. and um you know i'll finish my story with brian here in a minute but we have a one of our viewers mark latham that he said well how does your son feel about this um i'm glad you asked that mark he um when we first told him, like the day that he flew home, he was shocked. He was he was shocked. He I think he really didn't believe us that we were gonna sell the house, find a new job, get the dogs, and move out there. But he knows me well enough to know that when I say something that big, it I'm telling the truth. You know, I, I don't I'm not one of those people that say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and it never happens. Um, I try to be a person of my word. Um, and he he was like okay and then we came out for the first visit and he was like you guys are really doing this and we're like yeah and then we came out for the last visit where we were actually physically going to look at houses and finding things and i had found my job um in loveland which is about 45 minutes from him that's um, when it got real for that's him. yeah that's when it got real when i said i found a job and god provided this job let me tell you that's a whole nother show but um it's an amazing opportunity and I'm, I'm so excited and so blessed to be able to, to take on this adventure. Um, That's when he was he like, was like <laughs> okay, okay, mom, I'm, I, I can't wait. And he, I know in his mind, um, you know, he's a young man. Um, he's, he was grew up in church. I got saved when he was three years old um, and his family um, in out there, um, they do go to church. His dad, um, I think was raised Catholic, but doesn't really kind of go to church, but he does have a faith, an element of faith. Um, so he's in a different environment than when he was raised in. And so I know that he has had different experiences and things that may not have happened if he was at home with the two of us. Um, I feel like we're his ground where we keep him grounded in his faith a lot. Um, and it's so funny too, because you know, once he knew it was real, mm -hmm. then it was like all of a sudden he starts like sending us Bible verses yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to church on uh -huh. Sunday and, you know, <laughs> this and that. Yeah. So I've not, been, not, my Bible study, Mom. right. Not, not so much that he's out there doing crazy no, stuff, exactly. but there's yeah. probably some stuff that he's dabbled into. And I told him when he left, listen, this is your walk. You know, he was 17 years old. This is your walk now. Yeah. I have taught you everything that I can teach you. You know the word of God. You know ministry. You know what it's like to be out there. Um, but this is your walk now. And <laughs> so it was just funny because I'm like, oh, now all of a sudden now we're getting texts of scripture and, and encouraging us and this and that. So I think it's it's an awesome thing because it's, it's you know, God bringing the family back together. God knew what he was doing. For sure. mm -hmm. God, God mm -hmm. saw Colt saying, okay, it's time for you to get get rooted because we know he has a call on his life for children's ministry. Yeah. This kid is a, this young man is a rock star with kids. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, the, the thing like we talked about yesterday when we were talking about Ruth and we were talking about Naomi and we made the point that God has a, he's got a plan for all of us. You know, he's got a plan for all of us. And as parents, 
it is not our responsibility to direct or decide what that plan is. It, God is the one, like you said. Mm-hmm. But when you, you know, I know you've got one, we've got five kids and you, and you know, it's, it's one of those things. I think this comes ease more easily for, for mothers because we're nurturers mm-hmm. and we, we see each child and their individual and they grow up. And let me tell you how they are when they're a toddler. That's how they are the rest of their life. You know, <laughs> That's their innate personality that, that they came to this earth with. But every one of our children, no matter where they are in their age, they are different. Mm-hmm. And just because one goes to college or one works or one gets married right out of college and one has kids and one waits a little bit longer and one leaves the home before another one does, or one matures quicker than the, you know, you, if, if you got to allow that to happen because that's God's will. Now, if you interject and say, okay, here's your life, you're going to do this and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Then, then you're stepping in, um, And that's not what God wants us to do. You know, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13, it says, and and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to teach our kids that they have a personal walk with the Lord. Just like you said, Pastor Paul, that we have to teach them, you know, through our example, by having having um, God in our lives mm-hmm. and seeing how it works. I mean, I think it's fantastic that. And, and here's the another thing that I'm going to say. I think that Colton not only is he might be a little bit shocked and wow, but he feels love mm-hmm. and that's love that no doubt the Lord knows he needs and needed to feel number one. I think it's amazing that when he really said, man, this is happening, man, this is happening that he started sending y'all scriptures because it's almost like he's, he knows this, this is the standard. Right. This is the standard. And because this is the standard and he loves and respects you and he's also appreciative, he's going to he's going to give you the standard, which just it just it's amazing and makes me so happy, which is another thing that I'm seeing with all these changes since COVID, you know, with people turning their hearts back to the Lord, with people allowing God back into their homes and into their families and into their works. And, you know, with this, with Brian Glenn, who's the anchor there, Bright Side Broadcasting, um, and he, they're the only media, they're the only media company that um, they're, they're broadcasting everything. They're broadcasting everything that's going on and it's funded by the people. And, um, you know, I follow them on YouTube. Well, I, just happened to subscribe and here it was like 640, you know, 655 last night. I'm making dinner and I get this, I get a notification on my phone. Right side broadcasting is about to start a live broadcasting at 7 p.m. And it was a prayer and a scripture uh, study where it had the, all the anchors and one of the anchors is a, is a pastor. And here is a national media company at seven o'clock PM doing prayer, leading um, our, our country in prayer, talking about, you know, the story of Moses and the burning bush that we've discussed as well. And ending in in a, a hymn and prayer. You know what? If we'll just allow God to impress upon our hearts, prepare for that impression, 
Because let me tell you what, I have no doubt he's impressing stuff on your hearts right now. And you're not, you're not listening. You don't even feel it. You know, so let us prepare. And as Pastor Paul says all the ta- time, hashtag prayer is prep. So prepare yourself to receive that impression from the Lord. Become doers of the word and not just hearers. Right. Turn your children to the Lord so the Lord can teach them and let the Lord get out of the, the Lord's way. I mean, you know? So Holly, mm-hmm. any other, any other words that you want to share about what you've learned personally through your journey as a single mom, as a married blended family and where you are right now? Oh gosh, just that. I mean, the Lord has really been impressed that just trust him. Um, in, in Jewish wisdom, it talks about for your birth year, um, take the Psalm of the next year, however old you are. And the next Psalm is for that year. So you read it every day and get into that Psalm for that year. Um, this year, the last line of my Psalm, I'm not going to tell you which one it was, but the last line of my Psalm is, but I trust in you. And and that has been the foundation of my faith. I got, as I think I said, I got saved when Colt was three. So I really have learned to serve God and love God and walk in that um, throughout his life. And he's seen it, whether he paid attention, I know he was paying attention, but whether he realizes he was paying attention, um, I just, I've walked that out in front of him, my struggles. I try to be super transparent with him because um, I want him to learn from my experiences and not repeat my same mistakes, um, especially as he's gotten older. I share a lot of things with him, um, just uh, decisions that I've made and why I made the decisions just to teach him. I want him to understand. I want him to grow and learn the wisdom and just share the wisdom that the Lord's placed in me with him. And that's something that I've learned to pray always is always pray for wisdom. And the, the Bible says that if you ask for this and it will be given to you and then all things will be added to you. So that's, I think, is the walk that I've learned is to always pray for wisdom and always seek God for the wisdom and decisions that you need to make and that you've got to trust him. No matter right. what it looks like, you've got to trust him. And okay, eat, more last, tacos. eat more tacos. Eat more tacos. I don't need to eat more yeah. tacos. <laughs> okay, <laughs> last, last question for Holly. Uh-huh. Does your role as a mother ever stop? Never. 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 Uh, it changes and grows. And, and, um, I have to be aware of those changes. I can't parent him now like like I parented him when he was five, even though sometimes my heart wants to, but um, it never stops. Right. You know, uh, and, and I, and I love that because, you know, I've, I've seen people and that, you know, it's like a a certain age and it's like, "Eh," you know, you're on your own. And, um, the just like again, um, even though Ruth and Naomi weren't biological um, daughter and mother, God put them together in that role with Naomi being the mother, Ruth being the daughter. And we have to realize that, you know, God, the family is the building unit mm-hmm. of God's kingdom. That's why children are sent into a family. That's what he wants. And really focusing on the family, especially when we're, you know, we're getting close to a week away from Thanksgiving and we're going to be around family and surrounded by family. And, you know, hopefully we're we are preparing ourselves We're we are on our knees in prayer. We are waking up in the word. And, you know, we start with the word, with our scripture episode scripture and then. You know, if you decide you want to take that that scripture and do more study in the in um, Psalms chapter 18 or, you know, whatever your your personal scripture study is, um, you know, realizing that we've got to prepare ourselves so we can strengthen and fortify our families so we can strengthen and fortify our our communities so we can strengthen and fortify the world in which we live. And um, as believers, we've got to stop the evil. Yeah, we've yeah. got to stop the strongholds 
that Satan has on our lives personally, our families, and, and realize that, you know, Satan, man, I'm telling you what, there you get a family together and you get them strong and you get them loving and you get them sincerely in, in a place of love. Mm -mm. Satan has a hard time getting into that. So uh, I, I love it. Pastor Paul, you got any parting words you want to say? And then Holly, will you pray us out when you're done? Absolutely. No, this was uh, awesome because there are so many families out there, just like you said, um, that, you know, at some point, you know, the mother will be like, well, it's time for you to go. I think that's more of a, a father spirit because it's like, okay, I've prepared you. It's time for you to roll. But at the end of the day, you know, after a few years, I, you know, starting to, to, to have God work in me saying, you know what, it's time for us to be close to our son because family is the most important thing, especially right now, because he is like, we really believe that he'll be married in the next few years. And so for us, it's like, I want some little snot nosed kids running around my house. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and they, hey, and they need y'all. Yeah. They need, they, they need y'all. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really important. Um, you know, there's no way, there's no way, and we got to realize this, that Colton and he's going to be as strong as you two are spiritually because he's, he's younger. And he's not experienced what you've experienced in the in the role that grandparents play is huge. I mean, you know, it, that's one of the differences in our society as well as, you know, back in the day, our grandparents were around us a lot. You know, our, we knew our grandparents well. Our grandparents knew us. I mean, it was the family didn't just end. You know, there was several layers of protection and and we have we've started living um, Satan's way and not God's way. And we don't you know, we need several layers of protection for our family. So, you know, even this community of believers, you know, in Wake Up in the Word, we're a family. We're a family. We're another layer of protection. And um, so, you know, we've got to stay close. You've got to invite your friends into our community. Um, you know, you, you've got to share this out because, you know, believe me, we've got people that have their church communities. They've got this social media ministry, uh, you know, it's another layer of protection. They've got their biological family. They they've surrounded themselves with a kingdom family um, that's in their community. You know, we all need several layers of protection and family mm -hmm. is love. And if you're not around love, you need a new family. Okay. Well, I don't know where, you know, I don't know if that's biological family. I don't know if it's church family, the social media family, friends, family. I don't know what that family is, but mm -hmm. You got to have several layers of protection. God wants us protected. That's why he called you to be closer to your son because he needs several layers of protection as well. And so do those grandbabies that are on their way. I have no doubt in a couple of years too. Amen. Thanks, Jen. Amen. All right. I'll pray this out. Father, we just thank you for this time together. Thank you for wake up in the word. Bless Paul and Jen's this morning and all of the watcher, um, the live watchers and the replay watchers. Father, we just ask that you inhabit their presence today and have it their places and have it their hearts and let us uh, share your word and be bold in your word and seek you for all things. We um, are nothing without your wisdom and insight and discernment. And we give you all the praise and all the glory this morning in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 All righty, everybody. I love it. Until we meet again tomorrow, it's 630 Central uh, or on the replay, whichever you watch. Be big, be bold, and most importantly, be you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.